And I like this statement as well. He says, do not see God as ha ever having created anything, but rather as being in every moment a different configuration, meaning all experience is just different uh, configurations of him that sometimes seem to show him and sometimes seems to hide him. Because as all scriptures testify, he is the first and the last. Meaning if you're looking in time, from the first thing to the last thing is him. Apparent and hidden, as the Quran testifies, he is the visible and the invisible. Invisible, excuse me. And then it says he is knowledge of everything. Because all things only exist because they are known. Whether the hearing of a bird chirping, it is known. Whether the seeing of a tree, it is known. Whether the perception of a thought, it is known. Whether the knowing that you are, it is known. All things known are God, and the knowing is God, and the knower is God. And this is why it testifies in the scriptures, he knows all, because he is the only knower. But we think we are the knower. We, the mind tells us, no, I, this body, is the knower. No, the body doesn't know anything. The body is known. Thoughts do not know anything. Thoughts are known to who? To him. And these thoughts are him. They cannot exist apart from him. Nothing can exist outside of knowing. He manifests himself in his oneness and hides himself in his singularity. He is the first in his essence and in his self-subsistence. And he is the last in his everlastingness. He is the very being of the name of the first and the name of the last of the name of the apparent and of the name of the hidden. He is his own name and what is named. Just as God's existence is necessary, the non-existence of what is other than him is necessary. What you think is other than him is not other than him. He is free from there being any other than him. Indeed, other than him is him without any otherness. Whether believed to be with him or in him, inwardly or outwardly, whoever is qualified in this way has innumerable attributes without limit or end. Just as the person whose physical form passes away is deprived of all their attributes, whether praiseworthy or blameworthy, so the person who dies a mystical death has all their attributes, whether praiseworthy or blameworthy, taken away from them. Because they see, this is a good quote, because they see that it was never the person doing anything. So if it was never a person, you, Kate, John, Mark, doing anything, all your attributes get taken away and given to the one who is the doer of all things, which is God. So he says here, whether praiseworthy or blameworthy, taken away from them and God comes into their place in all their expressions and states. The essence of God comes into place of their essence and the attributes of God into the, the place of their attributes. And, and one who realizes this knows all things to be God in expressions of God. Because of this, the prophet said, die before you die. That is, know yourself before you die. He also said, God says, my servant continues to approach me with free acts until I love him. And when I love him, I am his hearing, his sight, his hand. This refers to the fact Whoever knows their self sees their whole being as the very being of God without any change in their essence or attributes. And this is why many 
especially the Abrahamic religion, say repent or turn. Turn away from the darkness that you see, meaning you see yourself as a separate being amongst many separate beings. Turn around and focus on that light that even knows that you are a being and knows the other beings. See that, and when you see that, you will see all things as yourself. God takes the last step upon a journey that never happened. There is no need for any change since a person was not the existence of their own essence, but instead was simply ignorant of the knowledge of their self. When you know yourself, egoism disappears, and your knowing is that you are no other than God. If you had an independent existence, you would have no need of the passing away or of self-knowledge. You would instead be a Lord apart from him. But there is no Lord apart from God who is blessed and exalted. And this is the problem that many don't see. They think their self, their independent self, they exist apart from God, can find God. So they're looking for God in outward objects. But God is to be seen in the opposite direction. Not from the outward object, but this is why many sages tell you to look inward. Because if you can find God in yourself, then you will find God in all things. And God to be all things. And that there are really no things except God. God is the only. The benefit of the knowledge of the self is to know for certain that you are neither existent nor non-existent. That you are not, never have been, and never will be. In this way, the meaning of there is no God but God becomes clear. There is no divinity other than him. Being belongs to none but him. There is no other except him. There is no God but he. Because all other gods that are thought of only appear in him. He is the most high. Nothing exists outside of him. He has never stopped being both ruler and ruled. Just as he has never stopped being both creator and what is created. And he is now as he has always been. His creativity and his lordship does not need what is created or is subject to him. When he brought creation and creatures into existence, he was already endowed with all his attributes, and he is now as he has always been. His oneness is the same whether it is seen as the new or the eternal. The new requires his manifestation and the eternal requires his remaining hidden. His exterior is identical to his interior. And his interior is identical to his exterior. His first is the same as his last and his last is the same as his first. The all is one and the one is all. What scripture doesn't portray this um, thought? God is all in all. He is described as every, he is described as every day in a different configuration when there is always nothing un other than him. And he is now as he has always been, since in reality what is other than him has no being. Just as in eternity without beginning and timelessness he was every he was every day in a different configuration when no thing existed. So he is now as he has always been. Although there is no thing or day, just as there has been from all eternity, no thing or day. The existence of the creatures and their non-existence are the same. If it were not so, it would require the origination of something which was not already in his oneness. That would imply imperfection, and his oneness is far more exalted than that. When you know yourself in this way, without paying 
without attributing any opposite, like, equal, or associate to God, then you really know yourself. This is why the prophet said, whoever knows their self knows their Lord, and not whoever gets rid of their self knows their Lord, because he knew and saw that there's nothing other than him. Then he pointed out that the knowledge of the self is the knowledge of God.